Hi everyone, it's Catherine, and welcome to another video. Um, I posted this card on my blog recently. This was for the Crafty Gals Corner Challenge blog. Um, they're just getting up and going, and this week was our first challenge. And I posted this card, and I got a lot of awesome feedback um, about the background of my card. And I appreciate all my blog visitors and all my blog followers. Um, and I got some new followers this week, which I'm very excited about. But I got a lot of comments about this background, so I thought I would show you how to do how I did the background because it was super easy. Um, but this was the card that is on my blog, and you can see the card at katherineallen.blogspot.com. Um, but to do the background, for I just take a regular piece of white cardstock. I use Nina Solar White cardstock. Um, it's kind of expensive, but I think it's worth it because it's a really good quality paper. And I have a bunch of paper already cut up into card front size, and I keep them in this basket. These were just some note cards that I had got, like from Michaels or whatever. But I cut all this card stock to card front size, like four and a fourth by five and a half. That way, when I'm ready to make a card, I can just grab a sheet of card stock and and get to it. Um, so I start with a sheet of cards of uh, cardstock like this, and what I use for the background is Distress Inks. If you're not familiar with Distress Inks, they are from Tim Holtz, and they're awesome. I have all of the mini Distress Inks, which I keep in this little. I'm sorry about the glare here from my. It's from my light. Um, I, ha I keep these distress. This is like an art bin container for markers, but I keep all my Distress Inks in here. These are all the mini sizes. And then uh, I also have all the full size ones because I am a scrapbook hoarder and I have to have everything. And I found this at TJ Maxx the other day and thought it fit perfectly with my full size distress ink pads. This is like, was in the kitchen section and you can put it in your refrigerator and it was only $7. So, and it fits the, these are the full size dis distress ink pads and they fit perfectly. And I have, have them all labeled. And I still have to do these because these are my newest ones. Um, but I have like a little swatch of what they look like stamped. So this is an idea for distress ink storage. But for this card, I used my mini distress inks. And I have two of these um, app ink applicators where you use like the little sponges. And um, But I have a little sponge for each color. And I saw this on another blog, how I store the little circles because this is just velcro I put it fits right on the bottom I mean come on how cute is that so I have them in all the colors so I have an ink applicator for each color so that works out great and the colors that I used on this card um, I'm trying to remember I think I used dusty Concord which is like a nice purple um, now I use salty ocean and I think I used faded jeans. I think I only used the three colors. So what so I started out with my darkest color and I take my little ink applicator off and what I do I just dab it in the ink and I always start off off of my craft mat in a circular motion and just kind of go along the paper like that getting a good coverage of ink just in this corner here and the reason that I start off of the craft mat is so I don't get circle shapes on the paper because I want all this to blend and one of the great things about the Tim Holtz distress inks is that they do blend really well and they react with water so you can get some really cool effects that way all right so that was that was the faded jeans, and now I'm going to go with some salty ocean. Like I said, I can't remember if these are the exact colors that I used, but it's close enough. Oh, see what I did right there? I didn't start off on my craft mat. So I got a big splotch right there. But I would say that that's okay because this is just a background and I would put something over that. Like I probably made a mistake underneath um, this or the sentiment and I just covered it up. So that's how I cover up my mistakes. <laughs> and then to get a little bit of purple in here, 
using the dusty concord. Okay, so that's kind of what I did, and probably what I should do is take a little bit more of the darkest color, this faded jeans, and fill more of it in here. Okay, so you've got a really neat background, and the ink is still a little bit wet, so you kind of have to let it dry a little bit but what these distress inks do really good with is they react with water so I have a bottle just filled with water and I put some on my craft sheet like that and for this particular background you can see it's kind of like a metallic splotchy I also took some perfect pearls just open the bottle here and I just use like a little scrap piece of paper and just put a little bit on the water And then I use my paintbrush to kind of mix it all together and you've got like this pearly water. All right. And then to get it to get the splotchy on, I just kind of take the paintbrush and just kind of do this. Just kind of flick it. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see me flicking. And I love to do backgrounds this way. I love to learn new techniques. I visit Jennifer McGuire's blog a lot to learn new techniques because she's very technique savvy. And you can see how the distress inks react with the water. They give the little splotchy. And then to clean this up, you just clean up with a tissue. Or another thing you could do is just take some water in your hand and just kind of... That was off camera, sorry. And just kind of flick it on there. And you can see, now this is wet, so you're going to have to let it dry or else use your heat tool on it. You can see all the cool little, little splotches that you get. And that's how I do, I've been doing backgrounds like this a lot. Um, and it's a really neat technique and you can use any kind of colors. Um, I just think this looked really good. I like the blues and the purples, so this is how I did this one. And then let me dry this a little bit so you can see it dry. There, once it dries, you can really see the pearly water. I know that's kind of messy right there, but this is just to show you, to give you an idea. If this was a real card, I would take a lot more time with this, but I wanted to show you just a quick video on how I did the background for this card. And again, um, please visit my blog at katherineallen.blogspot.com if you have any um, comments or I want to make more videos, you know, kind of show everybody. I love to share ideas and techniques. Um, so if you have anything you want to see, let me know and I will do my best to make it happen. Thanks and have a great weekend. Bye.